Well, great. We're done uh, downloading the source. If we type ls here, we see all of our source code here on our computer. And we're just going to continue following the instructions here. So we're uh, at the preparing to build section. You know, last time we downloaded the source, and now we're preparing to build. And what do we need to do? We need to set up the environment with this dot build environment setup dot shell. Uh, you can also use source if you don't want to use dot, but it does the same thing. So when we run that, uh, we see that it starts including some devices that is, have been downloaded. And um, let's uh, let's try lunch. So here we see when we run lunch, all of the different models that are available here. And um, so I actually don't own the latest Pixel phones, but uh, I think those would be a good one to build since that's what uh, this Android version was made for. So if I'm not mistaken, the code name for the uh, Pixel XL uh, phone is Marlin, and we see that's number 42 right here. So let's give that a try. So we're going to say number 42, we're going to hit enter, and we're going to watch the magic happen. So of course by running lunch, it actually is just going to set up the build environment, but it's not actually going to start building until we run this make command. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Now notice that we're building uh, number 42, which is the AOSP Marlin user debug. And let's take a look here. We have the user debug under the build types here. We have user, user debug, and eng. And user debug is like user, but with root access and debuggability preferred for debugging. Um, and less than that would be to make a user build, which is limited access suited for production. And more than that would be engineering build, development, configuration with additional debugging tools. So for instance, if I'm building a phone from scratch, like I did in one of my previous video series, I use the eng build type because I'm trying to build something from scratch. I want as many debugging tools as possible. Um, if I have got something that's completely built and just ready for uh, the regular end user to use, uh, often I'll use a user build type. Or if, uh, if it's something maybe I'm building it for the first time or I want uh, root access and a few things, uh, ADB uh, set up to be a little bit easier for me to get started working with. User debug is a great way to go. So uh, while you're building, you'll have to choose which build type you, uh, you intend to use. But uh, that's just a quick breakdown of what they are. So it's taking my computer a minute to think about uh, what it's uh, got to set up to prepare that build environment. And I'm just looking through here to see if there's anything else we can glean off this page while we're waiting. Um, not really anything at this point. We're just waiting for that to finish and then we're going to run the uh, make command. So I'll explain this make command a little bit. I've talked about this before in previous videos, but if you're new to uh, the series or if you're just getting started uh, with Android development, make is the command to tell the computer to actually make all the stuff that you've configured and set up to be built. So right now, running the lunch command, we're configuring, setting up everything to be built, and this make command, we are going to tell it to actually make those things. And notice that uh, it says build everything with make. New make can handle parallel tasks with a dash JN argument. And it's common to use a number of N tasks as between one and two times the number of hardware threads on the computer being used for the build. For example, a dual E5520 machine, two CPUs, four cores per CPU, two threads per core. The fastest builds are made with the command between J16 and J32. So it kind of depends on your uh, on your machine and how much power you have available. The biggest thing to remember is the more, uh, the higher the J command, the more parallel tasks you'll be running at once, the more RAM that you're going to need to 
fulfill those tasks as well. So something to keep in mind if you have a limited machine with not as much RAM, not as much uh, potential to build, you're probably better with sticking with a smaller make number. Um, I've actually built uh, Android on laptops before using Make J1, and uh, that can be really helpful if you uh, if you don't have a lot of resources. So here we are. We have uh, we're building uh, version nine, right? Android Pi. We're building the uh, Marlin, which I think is the Pixel XL, and we're building a user bug uh, variant. So, looks like it's all set up, ready for us to uh, build. So we're going to start by running the uh, make command. And uh, we're just going to run it with the default options, which I believe the default is uh, a J4. Um, but I'd have to check on that. Uh, so don't quote me on that. But uh, make make option just by default. You don't have to specify a J, um, a J tag on there to specify the number of tasks. So it's really great uh, from Android uh, 7 and up is the build environment that is being used comes with uh, very nice, um, not necessarily progress bars, but a fraction where you can see uh, percent completed. And uh, that is very, very helpful. Android Marshmallow and below, you just had to wait and uh, guess when it was going to be done, come back and keep looking at it to see if it was done. And now they actually have this uh, setup where it starts building and tells you how far along the process it really is, which is very, very helpful. So we're going to let this build. And uh, if anything interesting comes up, we'll be sure to uh, highlight that. If not, then we will uh, see you when the project is complete.